What's up, everybody? This video is for my prior service folks. So regardless if you were prior army or not, if you've been out of service for more than five years, if you haven't found out already, you will find out that you're about to go through army basic training all over again, unless you are one of the lucky ones who get an exception to policy to avoid basic training. So with that being said, in this video, I will be breaking down to you what to expect and some things to consider and factor on getting your mind right for Army basic training. So stay tuned. What's up, everybody? Welcome back here to Team Swartz. And if this is your first time here, welcome. I post a ton of Army basic training tips, recruiting, and other Army-related videos. So if that's what you're into, consider subscribing to this channel, hitting that bell icon, and turning on all notifications so you don't miss anything. I'm Jill Sergeant Swartz, your local New York Army National Guard's virtual recruiter and part-time drill with our Recruit Sustainment Program, which is a National Guard paid pre-basic training that we facilitate to our soldiers to prepare them for Army basic training. So with that being said, if you happen to be from New York, anywhere in New York, and would like to know how we can help you reach your goals, shoot me a text, get started to this number on the screen, and we'll get you started today without any obligation to join. So with that being said, I recently did a video uh, about a month or two ago about joining at an older age, and that will still apply to you as a prior service member. So I implore you, I suggest that you go and watch that video because all those things will still apply to you. I'll post a card about that video right up here and in the description area for you to peep at at a later date. So in addition to what I shared into that video, I want you to prepare yourself and drink the Kool-Aid. You will, regardless of how you feel, will be expected to do everything that the rest of the trainees are doing and then some. Expect early on, uh, if not in the beginning, to be assigned to a student leadership position, right? And don't let your ego get you, all right? Check your ego at the door. We don't care if you got out as an E5 sergeant or staff sergeant or so on. Drink the Kool-Aid. You are a trainee in all sense of the word. Your rank means nothing. So if need be, have a slice of humble pie. If you are stuck in the general population in the barracks with the rest of the trainees, do not try to pull rank. You are not more special than them. If not, you are held at a higher standard. So the biggest question I get a lot from prior service members is, will they be uh, housed in separate quarters or will they be with general pop in the barracks with the rest of the trainees? So it's at the basic training commander's uh, discretion on whether or not you will stay in separate quarters or you will be in the barracks. And it's also based on availability. So if you're lucky, you will be separated in def different quarters. But I would expect that you will stay in the barracks. And that's generally what happens anyway. Uh, if you're lucky, uh, depending on how the barracks are set up, if there is like the big open bay that will house like 60 soldiers and or trainees, and then that you have separate rooms of like four to eight trainees per room, more than likely they'll put like your prior service individuals like yourself separated into those rooms. But housed in the same barracks area. Worst case scenario, you'll be in the barracks. So get your mind right, be prepared. As a prior service individual, you will not have to do 24 hour CQ. You will fall in line with the rest of the trainees doing one to two hours of fire guard and or CQ. The other biggest question is, uh, will you be doing the six week refresher course or will you be stuck doing the full 10 week, full version basic training experience? Unfortunately, this is also up to the commander's discretion. And in most cases, what they try to do is if they have enough prior service individuals coming through the reception battalion, they try to uh, hone you guys in into one platoon to do that six week course. However, comma, if they do not have enough prior service trainees, you will be, like I said, in with the general populace doing the full 10 week version, which is generally what happens, unfortunately. But if they have enough prior service individuals and the facility to facilitate that six week course, they will. But uh, don't hold your breath. Best case scenario, if you don't get into the six week course, what will happen is, and again, it's commander's discretion, is you'll skip the red phase. So you'll obviously have to do yellow phase just like everyone else, uh, but you will get placed into white phase which is BRM. So regardless uh, of the six week course or not, at worst case scenario, you have to start in white phase, which is BRM, basic rifle marksmanship. You will have to qualify with your assigned weapon. So just keep that in mind. But again, most prior service individuals will be starting square one, day zero, 
uh, of yellow phase right before the new red phase. So if you don't know what yellow phase is or controlled monitoring when you're getting to Army basic training, I'll post a card right up here, the all new yellow phase about the controlled monitoring, which is essentially kind of like uh, self-quarantining for two weeks while continuing your Army basic training to allow your basic training to be 10 weeks versus 12 weeks, including the quarantine. So, but that video will definitely check, uh, explain everything to you. So what privileges will you have as a prior service soldier, if any? That too will be at the commander's discretion at your basic training site. And you will either have a good time or a not so good time. Most of the time, uh, prior service individuals will fall in line with the normal trainees with the full version 10 week with the same privileges as everyone else, which means that you're not special. Now, if you are fortunate enough to get housed in separate quarters and just have to report at the first formation of the day for PT and all that stuff on the next day, you will probably have more than likely full access to your phone every evening and be treated like a prior service individual at an AIT site where you'll train with the trainees during the day, um, but treated like an NCO, so to speak. So, <clears throat> while you're at Army Basic Training as a prior service individual, and if you are an NCO, they will treat you with respect, obviously. I mean, they respect everyone. And once your drill sergeant finds out that you are prior service, especially as an NCO, again, they will treat you like an NCO. You will still have to do what everyone else does, because that's what is expected of you as a trainee at a basic training environment, and you need to set the example. So your prior service, you know better, so act accordingly. So as long as you're drinking the Kool-Aid, you are participating and doing everything that you're supposed to, the drill sergeants for the most part will back off of you. Even though you're still gonna have to do what everyone else does, they just won't specifically mess with you unless you act in a way that causes unnecessary additional attention. Because your prior service does not mean that you're gonna get preferential treatment. It's just, you're not special. As a prior service individual, whatever rank that you re-enlisted as, whether it's a specialist, sergeant, staff sergeant, sergeant first class, that is the rank that you will wear through Army basic training, even if you're with the general pop of the regular trainees at basic training. In my opinion, I would suggest that you bring your own rank, right? So when I went through the United States Army Drill Sergeant Academy, they reissued me all, sets of, uh, all new sets of uniforms and whatnot. They didn't have any NCO ranks, or if they did, they just didn't want to give it to us, but they did give us name tapes. So if that is the case when you go through, I would suggest that if you wanna wear your NCO rank, to bring your rank with you. Get the OCP, whatever your rank is, and bring that with you. Just a, a helpful tip for you. If you wanna wear your rank and they don't happen to have it when you're going through the clothing and sales through the reception battalion. I get asked this question all the time. <laughs> Sergeant Swartz, can I bring my POV to Army basic training and or AIT or go to basic training without my POV and then leave and come back to AIT with my POV? And the answer is a hard pass. Hard no, do not go past go, do not collect $200, not authorized. Now, if you get pre-approval from your recruiting command prior to shipping out to training as a prior service individual, maybe you're driving yourself there, that may be a different story, but that has to get vetted by your recruiting command and get permission and probably a memorandum um, authorizing you to bring your POV. But in general, the answer is no. So if you join the Army National Guard and you need to uh, complete Army basic training, you will attend the Recruit Sustainment Program, or RSP for short. This RSP program in the National Guard is designed to mentally and physically prepare our soldiers for what's to, to come in Army basic training. So we do a lot of stuff that they would pretty much learn in basic training, but much, much more watered down, okay? It's more like an introductory to what, what they're gonna go through. Now, most units don't have the funding to send you back to an AIT environment, but they will send you into like a National Guard Army Reserve uh, site where you will break it down into in individual phases, anywhere from one to like three or four phases, depending on how technical your MOS is. So if you have any additional questions or comments as a prior service individual going to Army Basic Training, please comment them below. I would love to help you out. And if it warrants it, if I get enough awesome questions that I have not already addressed in this video or joining as uh, at, at an older age, uh, trust me, I will do another video for you to address it so that everyone can be in the know. With that being said, if you made it this far into the video, drop a hashtag Team Swartz down below. Hit that like button, smash it if that's something you're into. And, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Hold up, wait a minute. Like this video and follow me on social. And while you're at it, go ahead and uh, check out one of my other videos right over here. Just, just, just pick one. They're pretty cool. I mean, I liked it. I mean, 
I mean, I was in it. Spoiler alert. <laughs> I teach you something. Just, just saying.